Good morning, folks. For the 200 plus comments asking where yesterday's news was, the answer is here on YouTube, posted on Facebook and on all of our websites. You just didn't get a notification for it. Since I think it was yesterday's top story that caused the issue, I'll share it again today because it is worth seeing. But we are here finding a lot of quiet on our star with the active region cresting the northeastern limb, having quieted significantly since its initial flaring uptick. The sunspots appear to be in decay beneath those bright umbral magnetic fields, and the solar wind intensification continues, but once again, we are in moderate range only as the plasma speed of the stream is still below 500 kilometers per second. Geomagnetic conditions mildly responding to the coronal hole stream to match its mild intensity. Top quake of the last day was a blot echo at the low velocity zone beneath Peru. A couple of blot echoes around it actually as well. And speaking of those blot echoes, we took three of them in the northwest Pacific region, Kamchatka, Kuril, and Japan. Weather alert today for parts of Mexico and Central America. This is actually strong enough to classify as a tropical storm, and depression strength storms will rage in the region for days. Low-lying areas and other wind and flood risk zones need to be on alert there. So yesterday's top story was this, and red is faint optical light while green is deep revealed x-ray return. If it wasn't enough that the X-ray glowing plasma is wrapped in a helix around the axis of the pulsar wind nebula, there is a giant, perfectly straight line filament of X-ray glowing plasma either going right to it or coming right out of it. Either explanation is weird and presents new concepts as this new deep X-ray dive implicates that these straight lines may be all over the place. Good luck explaining that one, dark matter. And speaking of dark matter models, we've got another major issue here for the cosmic microwave background. Recently, we've seen Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille hitting the topic. We've covered a major publication last week about its dust uncertainties, and here is yet another one, this time in conflict with the Planck 2018 CMB adjustments. Let's take a little breather here from science to get an aesthetic shot of NGC 3895. We are going to be scaling down from the cosmic range to galaxies and the sun to close, but first here, where are all the stars in this galaxy? They do describe it as looking more like a latte than a galaxy, and while I'm not quite sure about that, I do definitely expect to see more specks of white when I see a Hubble shot of a galaxy. Now we're moving on to the Milky Way galaxy here. The interest in the galactic current sheet continues, and recall that if they are correct about the Parker spiral in the galactic disk, it is the hand that swings the sword of the sun to cause the cyclical disaster on Earth, and we've seen numerous efforts to reveal this structure. Up next is Gaius. In each square, the galactic center is at zero, or the left axis, and you should be able to see the rippling, the warp, and eventual bunching up of the sheet into vertical galactic waves towards the outside. Just a reminder, the galactic trigger is real. But for now, let's see what the latest solar science says. Here they are pegging the solar control over the North Atlantic Oscillation as the modulating force of the hydroclimate in Asia. It's very nice to see the correlation between the Sun and NAO so well established now, it's just a tool that can be used elsewhere. Up next, we're looking at the bottom side of the ionosphere. In a move that identifies one of the critical aspects missing from modern climate models, they demonstrate how the lowest levels of the ionic shells of this planet are dismally modeled. This is a bad place to mess up, given that this is where space weather interacts and where the energy transformation into the global electric circuit occurs. Where the papers show these minute scale changes in surface pressure and cloud opacity with changes in the solar wind. Right there. This is why we keep seeing the same kinds of stories about the model sensitivities being out of whack. I covered a bunch of these stories in my address to Dr. Roy Spencer last week, and here is yet another from GRL. The biases creating over-amplified trends that are not at all supported by real observations. And lastly, folks, the Atlantic is indeed shutting down. This is something we've been looking at for the last few years. It's not quite like in the movie The Day After Tomorrow, but not exactly a different story apart from the realistic timeline of reality. The warm engine will slow the delivery of equatorial heat to higher latitudes. The energy stuck in the tropics will work the major tropical storms in the region. Neither one of those sounds fun. More, stronger hurricanes, or a worse winter. We greatly appreciate your support. After my wife and I battled with your votes on Facebook, we just decided to get both versions of the new hat. Folks, this is a limited run, limited quantities. The new hats are here, and you can get them at otf.cells.com. Maybe consider picking up one of our space books for kids if you have a little one. 
website members, yesterday's podcast was a very fun one. Don't miss it if you have access to the premium content. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our start of close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.